welcome again to Dorothy's Dungeon Details. So today we are going to be starting the first version of prepping this. And I, while we can do a full set, I'm going to be showing just one single square. Uh, mainly so that way I can use these this one sheet multiple times to show you the different versions that you can be doing. Uh, I am going to make a couple of them dual sided and you can make them dual sided as well. The only problem with dual sided is that... When you do them, oops, trying to separate this, the two different sides, here, the line up doesn't work quite as well. So if you do dual sided, then you can't use the two pieces together. Versus, you can make them all on the same side with the different textures. Uh, like you can make both your dun you can make your dungeons and your taverns here, and then they work together smoothly. If you want to do them just singly sided but I will be doing a lot of them dual sided showing that you can use both sides of this mat to make both pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and switch camera angles and we'll get started. Okay, so we're set up now and so we're going to go ahead and do it. And like I said, you can go like this and work your way across with this with the full large sheet, but I'm going to be working with just the single and this is just so that way you can get a better view in my small little area here. Okay, so to start off, we're going to be doing just a basic tile set and there is an example of what that looks like there. We are doing graded for this format. There are different styles that I will show that will give a semi-graded uh, style and that's one of the ways I prefer to actually use it. So first thing we're going to do is go ahead and work on the lines going across this way and then we'll change it and we'll go the ones going across this way. So you want to line up using these little puzzle piece tabs. On one side you want to use the uh, side here and on the other side you're going to use this. You have to make sure that you kind of uh, do it from that one, uh, the starting on this bottom corner one. Otherwise you're going to cut through and you'll end up with some squares that when you match up the different puzzle pieces they won't line up squares neatly. So, oops. go ahead and go where you line it up just there and just there with the little edges. Take your cutter and just do two or three light passes. It takes very lightness. As you see, you don't want to go too far through there. I'm trying to get a good angle. As you can see, I barely went maybe a third of the way through the tile there. Uh, it won't take very much for that to show through when we heat it up in a little while. Uh, so you're going to do it from there. You're going to want to make sure you use the same side. So you don't want to go here to there. You want to go to the end of the next little puzzle piece. Line it up with the top one. And once again, just two, three small passes. You can do these singly one at a time. It will take a long time. So I do recommend doing it with the big sheet. Though you do want to be super careful because you do not want to catch your fingers. we go we have three nice cuts there and I'm gonna turn it and do the other three once again these blades are very sharp so please be super careful when you're cutting this I have cut myself very many times as you can see there from my thumb <laughs> uh, and these things do hurt thankfully I haven't got any blood on projects so that's success there and I hope to not record any blood. So, and you can see each one is separated out there. And as you do each one of the tiles, the reason why you want to make sure you line up with that left side on the bottom tack there is it will line up to where the sides here create the one square there. And when you get the four corners, they all form together to make that one corner spot there. Uh, as you can tell, this to this tile here, the grooves are not very deep and we'll correct that when we get to the next stage after this prepping for cutting. We'll get to the next stage there and that will show uh, how we make those more indented there to be able to create the uh, more detailed lines. So that is the first style, just the basic cut there. Now, as I was talking about before about if you don't want to cut using the right side of the plush. That is if you want to create a different style then using that is okay. So once again we'll start it off lining it up here with that first 
bottom left, top right. And then we will go to the bottom right, top left on the tile of uh, puzzle pieces. And we'll go again, bottom left, top right. Bottom right, top left. And continue forward. Okay, now one of the differences with here, even though we have the five nice lines there, when you go to line them up, these sections are going to be really wide. So one way to fix that solution is you want to line it up right along with where the tile edge hits here inside the puzzle piece. And just very carefully hit little scores right across those puzzle pieces. You want to be very careful in these areas because these are the more sensitive areas that are more likely to fall off and be damaged if you cut too deep because they, they have much less surface area to be able to grab onto the piece. I'm going to do that on both sides. I'm just turning it around to make it easier as far as holding the ruler. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing now on the other way to create both vertical and horizontal lines. So cutting it down on the puzzle sides. Then go bottom left, top right, bottom right, top left, and keep going across. I'm going to go ahead and turn it around so it'll be easier on the ruler. We'll hit that edge first with the puzzle edges. I think this is the last one there. And there it is. So this time now we have a bunch of smaller squares. And this is great for a little ruin design. Oops, let me see. Where's my sample? There's those. You can see it a little bit better on the black one here. Uh, those are better for a little ruin type design or gives you the small squares. One of the great things about this is this is semi-gridless. It has the same squares where you can see like those four is one square, those are another square, but when you're actually out it looks more like stone tech, stone pattern versus a grid that makes it look very game-like. And so I do like this style a little bit better. So those are your two different options. You got the large squares or you can do the small squares. And that's it for the basic simple squares. Uh, design for the tiles. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a flip side and I'm going to show you how to do the tavern cuts. Okay. This one is a little more complicated and this one I do recommend the smooth side just because this is going to be nice and neat where we'll be able to get our smoother uh, wood grain texture. The wire brushes cut into this side a lot easier so you'll be able to get a nice cleaner thing. Now this one uh, is going to be a little more complicated as I said. This one you're going to want to go from the middle on the, on the bottom. You're going to go from the middle plate on the right side to the top middle on the left side. Line that up. Once again, just a small cut. And like I said, one of the benefits here is that this is now a dual-sided tile. So that means I can get two different layouts using this one tile. Then again, the problem is that you will not be able to mix and match tile sets doing it this way. So there's that line. And then we're going to turn it this way and do the same across the top. This is going to help and give us a nice set for getting the tile started. For the thing. Now, so you're going to go from the bottom left corner. You want to always, you want to pick a corner. You can start from the top right, but I recommend doing the bottom left corner, and that will give you a nice starting point to know where to go from. So you're going to line it up with now that middle left, top right. You're going to line it up. This time you're going to go from where your little cut line is there to the bottom, right there. And then you're going to go from the bottom right to the top left there on that. Line it up. This is where one of those things of having the full sheet makes it a lot easier because your roller has something else on this side to be able to support itself better on. 
and it's going to go down there. And so now you have in this bottom corner, you have two little dashes there, and that's going to create each one of your wood planks. And then you'll just keep turning it and working your way around in order to create out the full tile. And I do recommend going and doing each lower corner turn, lower corner turn, lower corner turn, rather than doing the lower corner, top corner. Just because one, it makes it a lot easier where you're not going past this little cut line here. And you also, it'll help make it easier to where you have less likely times that you're going to get it mixed, especially if you're doing a large sheet, where you're going to get it mixed up and you'll end up cutting this one doing verticals versus the horizontals. I really hope those lines are showing through very well in the camera. So once again, we'll turn there. And do cuts. One, two. Turn. One. And two. Okay. There it goes, and now the full tile there is prepped out, ready to go. If you see any areas, like right here, you can kind of see where it didn't quite get all the way up to the cut there. And you just lightly take your box cutter and just carefully score right there using your lines as a guide. And that will help separate up those little pieces there, and you can better get it there. Now, the very last step, if you look here between the two, you can see these black ones have very nice little wood grain texture whereas these ones are just completely smooth so this part is an optional step though it does make the difference is pretty visible there uh, you can choose to do this after our next step if you forget to do it beforehand or if you get the wire brush after you can do it I just like to do it beforehand just because when we do the heat up it'll actually make these more in depth than here they are even here so okay so we're gonna get oops, where I'm sorry. There it is. Okay. So we're going to get our wire brush. Once again, this is the heavy brush. If you want to see the exact full pack, this is from Dollar Tree. I show it off in my materials video. So you're just going to take the wire brush and you're going to line it up with... Tilt it there's actually... Gonna kind of color this just a little bit so you can see. Okay. That is just a little bit more color there so you can see out where the each of the planks are at. But you're gonna for this part you will have to separate each of your pieces and do them individually, just so that way this won't carry off onto the next board and mess up your grooves. But you're gonna want to go in between each one. Just dig it down just a little bit and scratch. And right away you can already see. Oops, if I can get focus. You can already see that detail coming in there. And it carries all the way to the edge of the plank there. And so you're gonna want to do that for each individual board and just drag it along. Turn it, drag it. You want to make sure that you're dragging with the planks individually this way rather than this way because this will create more of a what's the word I want to use but it'll it'll go through your plank lines and so it won't look quite as like one individual board there and last one Oops, didn't quite get all the way on that one so here we go now you have nice wood like texture across those got small squares on this side and we got a big square on this side now there are plenty others that you can do um, I will maybe get along to showing off some other styles that you can do along with these uh, for now these are gonna be the three main that we're gonna do for prepping so go ahead and get your boards prepped and then we will move on to the next stage okay so here we are with the last step the last step is the heat up part um, which it is possible to do without heating up the piece. I will show an example of that. So the first one I'm going to show is the heat gun. This is the method that I tend to use the most. And uh, here is the up close details of what it finally looks like there. This is just a simple single black base coat with a, a, dry, a 
light gray overbrush just to show up the details on there for you but it basically heats up and separates those lines to create the thing and it works on the dungeon side the downside of the heat gun is that it will want to peel off this plastic image and that means you're having to swipe either it'll curl up like this and uh, you can leave it stuck on there or you'll have to be trying to swipe away while heating it up and that can be very dangerous for your hands because you're risking burning yourself and you're also having to risk making sure that you don't burn the piece because of the high heat on there uh... so that is there uh... the second option is the stove which uh... i may end up start using this one on my pieces uh... i like the result that it gave especially on the picture side but this is the wood side here. Like I said, I have a preference on this one for the wood side. Just the detailing there to me looks a little better. But it does do a really nice job of engraving everything in there for you. And to do this one, it only took about 30 seconds to a minute holding the piece over the eye of the stove, which I have an electric stove, but it should work on a gas as well. But uh, it comes out really nicely and it heats up that fairly well. And just about everyone has access to a stove of some kind. Uh, the next option is a heater. Right now it's winter time so I had my heater out plugged up to help keep me warm and I just decided to kind of try it out but it does pretty good job there on separating out the things. The uh, little wood grain texture does not come out quite as well there but it does come out fairly nice and it does work for the pitcher side as well and it do you don't have to worry about that pitcher coming off. Uh, to do that, I just basically took it and held it up in front of my heater like that for about, uh, this one took about two to three minutes, so it's a lot longer than this, um, or the heat gun options, just because it's not as high of a temperature on a little heater. Uh, the last option is the one in case you don't have access to any of the other heat methods, and that is to use a pin. Basically, you will take your pin, and you will just go and go through the lines really nicely there and that will help to increase the things the downside is is that it doesn't increase the wood texture very much there it is still a viable option as you can see you can still definitely see the individual wood planks and you can still see some of the wood grain it is definitely not as nice as one of these other options here um but it does do the job if that's all you have. I do recommend that if you have to do the pin method to do it, on, do all of your textures on this side versus the image. Because as you can see, the picture, the pin does not want to take very well to this picture side. It does not want to push down and separate those grooves out very well. It's workable, but I would recommend doing all of your texture on the smooth side if you have to do the pin. Uh, so those are the four different options that I have as far as creating the final indents for the piece and that will bring you up to your full prep piece that is ready for painting. Um, I have four different designs for this side and I have four different designs for the tavern side. I will probably do the dungeon pieces on individual videos so you can look and see which video you want to do while the tavern pieces I'll probably do those all in one video because they're very similar paint schemes and they use just about the same colors. So that's going to be it for your prep work for your tiles. Uh, go ahead and keep following along and we will see you again when it's time for painting. Thank you. Have a great day.